Yep. Oh, yep. Hello, hello. Best music. Welcome to Alpha Book Club. We brought wine. Hope Yay. you did too. Yeah, that's right. Cheers. Cheers. Books. And Reading. Reading books. We're and wine. smart. Mm, I'm excited about this one. As you guys know, the, and the title suggests that this is an online interactive book club for our Alpha community members. Hello there. My name is Maud Garrett. Joining us as always, we've got Hector Navarro. Right What's up? Now. Stop doing that. No, not good. Sorry, Maud. You have Welcome one back. sip of wine. Right. You have one zapped everywhere. Crazy. Uh, and Rachel Hine as well. Hello, Ray. Hi, how's it going? That's a lovely. Hello, that's great. Hi. Hi. That's better than mine. Yeah, sorry <coughs> about that one. Mm -hmm. So, so far, this is our third week covering Ready Play One by Ernest Klein. We've read up to chapter 30. So, what has previously happened, Hector? I'll tell you. Uh, what happened in our last section? Yes. You last want me to 10 also chapters. cover up to up to up to twenty. Oh, up to twenty. Yeah. Here's what happened up to chapter twenty. Oh my God, the world is gross. Yep. The world is awful. Uh, <laughs> oh my God. Uh, kid, this kid lives in a trailer park that's stacked up on trailer parks, and he's super good at this cool virtual reality game that's kind of like EverQuest meets World of Warcraft meets every game and movie ever made ever <gasps> in the history of everything. Um, and he's an expert at everything. And he uh, uh, is looking for a, a Easter egg that is like Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory will yeah. lead to uh, whoever wins this Easter egg will find the long lost treasure of James Halliday uh, and, and inherit his wealth. Mm. 250 billion, 350 billion, some ridiculous amount. Controlling stock in the company that then creates this game and runs this game. So it's like controlling the world or something, becoming the president of the world. Um, and uh, because he's so good and knows all about uh, 80s popular culture, which is what Halliday was obsessed with to a dangerous degree, he has these advantages and people spend years looking for this. So this kid, Wade something, Wade, what is it? Wade Watts. Wade Watts. Wade I Watts. called him Wade Wilson today. Wade Wilson, Deadpool, <laughs> gets a healing factor. I called him that today. He decides to go after his girlfriend, not to be confused with Slade Wilson, not to be confused with Wade Watts. Wade Watts <laughs> finds the first uh, uh, part of this three-part um, Easter egg, the first gate, right? Yes. And he's able to beat the, he finds the first key, key. to open the first gate and mm -hmm. then beat that first challenge, which was a, a challenge of uh, um, uh, going through the movie War Games as Matthew Broderick's character, like doing all the lines. And then to even get the key, he had to beat a cool like dungeon lich at a game of joust. Mm -hmm. And then as he, the rest of the chapters progress, you meet other characters, including like the second best in the world is this female character, as far as we know, named Artemis who Wade obviously falls in love with because he's never met this woman and she looks really cool in like a virtual setting. And she speaks geek. Yeah, she, she speaks loves, geek. She loves all the geeky stuff. She's geek fluent. So she breaks up with him because she's like, you don't even know me, dude. Bye, go away. <laughs> um, and at the very end of this chapter, we learn that Jade, the Jade key rather, has been unlocked by Artemis. Yes. Because Wade, yeah. Wade kind of like got all messed up about Artemis. He's like, oh, I'm so sad, and wasn't focusing on the mission at hand. Wasn't focusing on 240 million, billion, billion dollars. Exactly. Oh, so the power of the push, control yeah. of the. Yeah, amen. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Also, there's the corporate espionage sort of taking place with yes. the yes. IOI. IOI, yep. mm -hmm. right? Their, their headquarters are located in Columbus, Ohio. Mm -hmm. That's true. But in the virtual world, I flew they over that cool today. Did you really? Yes, I, yes, I saw it on the map. Awesome. Gosh, there's so many. Different towns and cities and states. <laughs> there is. Throughout a lot of them I was look studying the same, that map. But a lot of them have a bunch of cool people in them. Yeah. It's real nice. If you're there, sup. Sup. <laughs> I see you. Shout out to Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> 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 Guys, let us know in the chat if you're in Columbus, Ohio. Let us know. Yes, um, I saw you. And uh, uh, yeah, so there's that in, in, in espionage. This, this, this group of people that become called uh, named the Sixers mm -hmm. because what is it? All their numbers start with six. Or yes, something? their co their their, employee, their employee number codes that they're using in the game. So when and, they show up on the the scoreboard, they they're all, all they're they all start only with in the urology department. Though. Yes. Right, and they are as a team as a, a corporation trying to hunt down this Easter egg to then again gain controlling, stock controlling interest in this company, in the company that... And uh, to make bank and to advertise yeah. and to do a monthly subscription mm -hmm. fee, which is And to charge people, because this is free, because this service is free. Mm. And th well, it was this, a quarter. this company wants to charge people. Well, you're going to be particular. True, it was Soz. only a quarter. That's right. We thought to kick this show off, we would actually get an alpha community member yes. yeah. patched in to have a chat about how they're going with uh, Ready Play One right now. Patch Perryman. Patch, you in? Oh, I'm shoot. Here. Oh, hey, Patch. What's up, bud? Totally forgot hey, about it's it. All good. Good to there see he you. is. Oh, that's a beard. That My a beard. man. That's a good beard. That's, that's incredible. Do you beard. brush that? And it's real. Yo, look at that. You are taking on that. How are you going with Ready yeah. Player One? Are you new to it? I've uh, read Player One, Ready Player One actually a couple of times, and uh, I'm rereading it for maybe the fourth or fifth time now. Wow. Nice. What wow. keeps bringing you back to this book? Yeah. 
Uh, a couple of things. One is, I think, like the three of you have already said in the past, the first time you read it, you think, oh my goodness, this is just like the best geeky, nerdy, mm -hmm. nostalgic trip through the 80s. And I was a 74 born kid. So the 80s hit, I was six. Yeah. Right. That was your, your prime. So, yeah. So this was a great little kind of a trip back. But then you read it the second time and then you start thinking maybe this geeky kid he's not as realistic as you get and more mm. and more you read it and the more you think about it there's some great subtle uh societal comments that are being made throughout the entire book mm -hmm. totally time. i agree patch absolutely what like, is something uh, now you said you're on your fourth read through what is something that you're picking up now whether it's through the themes or even little details or whatever that you might not have picked up first time around well, I think um, I, I've got a little bit of a background in, in reading a little bit of, of, of English history and other things. One of the things that I'll, that I'll p pick on, actually, that we ended up not talking about yet in, this, uh, in ABC so far is there's something about, and this is going probably to the end of what we're reading right now, but as uh, Percival Wade is picked up and ready to go into IOI mm -hmm. and be processed, he now gets to have this coming down moments where he is no longer safe in the oasis he is right. now this is real life for him now and he is going in to the belly of the beast as it were and the way it's depicted is extraordinarily dickinsonian it is straight out of old curiosity shop it is debtor's prison it is the ruination of people you cannot get out you will not be going anywhere from here they will continue to work you to the bone yep. yeah they own you they own your soul every time you think you have any sort of freedom they just kind of take it mm -hmm. absolutely yeah. One of my they you. will tell you how to think and how to work and how to do that's yeah. fantastic. I really want to just pass something on, Patch, from the comment. Plague Wind is in the chat room, and he said that you have a dwarven quality mm. beard. <laughs> and I felt like that you needed to know that. Because, yes, you did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, you did. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get back to the book, though. Um, have you read any um, of Ernest Klein's other work? Have you read Armada? I I did read, um, I did read Armada. Um, I wasn't as into Armada. I felt more like he was... Um, trying to bring back something that he may have forgotten in, in Ready Player One. I took a different mm. look at it, maybe, than other people. Um, a lot of my friends who did read Ernest Klein, uh, Ready Player One, they came back and they said, oh, Armada is just the same kind of excellent trip. It's the first time you read it and you just love it. I thought, no, I'm not as into it as much as the first read of Ready Player One. And mm. it, it, like you said, I think last time as well, is that there's you get to know the ships really well you get to know the the setting really well but the people don't really they don't catch you don't get this connection with characters sure. that you do with ready player one i feel like ernest klein has definitely placed himself in wade watts and what he kind of wished he could have been in it should it have, should he have been born in this futuristic oh yeah society um yes. but now that you've read it quite a few times and we've had a few people in the comments say no no spoilers please but are you rooting for Wade Watts? Do you actually like the guy? Yeah, actually, I do. I, I want him to win. I want him to get through the, the whole thing. He's got the crystal key at this point, and yeah. he needs to get to the end point of the game. But, you know, he's he's got two quests now, doesn't he? He doesn't want to just get the he doesn't want to just get the girl and win the whole thing and become the hero and get the fame. Now he has to defeat Sorrento. Right. Yes, now it's, it's personal. personal, for sure. Absolutely. And revenge is actually, you can see this shift because we will talk about it coming up. Shoto and Daito. Daito, mm -hmm. yeah. huge things have happened with him and now Shoto's like, revenge mm -hmm. yeah. is happening. Yes. I so I think, yeah, that's what we're going to be talking a lot more. Yeah. It's not just a game. And that, we're and that you mentioning that actually plays into what Hector said last time about the extraordinary um, stereotype that's played into those two characters yes. of just oh Japanese goodness. culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, I, I that revenge, I have to come back. Yes. I am the samurai. I mm -hmm. yes. Oh, here's the sword. Honor. For yeah. You. Honor. <laughs> uh, question for you, Patch, because I, I, I am so interested in people who have read this book multiple times, love the book, uh, uh, and have read different things into it uh, concerning this movie adaptation that's coming out. I want to ask you, what do you think is like the one thing that they need to nail, whether it's a tiny detail or like a big thematic thing, or even something that might be different from the book? that to you would mean that it would be a successful adaptation of this story? Well, I think right out of the gate, the first one that comes to mind is they really have to get all of the graphics done correctly when it comes yeah. to how they're going to make the world around Wade and what Ohio now looks like. Yeah. They've got to nail that geography 
and then be able to contrast that properly with the world of the Oasis. Mm. I mean, you can do a lot of great things, and we have amazing technological breakthroughs when it comes yeah. to cinema. But when it comes to actually creating the dystopia center that the world has become, that Wade is attempting to escape from, and the rest of the world is escaping from by going into the Oasis, mm. that I think is the key thing they need to nail in the movie. So seeing that disruption right. and despair and then going into a utopia that's mm -hmm. not actually real, but far yeah. more better. You definitely okay. need that Wizard of Oz moment. That's awesome. Yes. Thank yeah. you so much Thank for joining you. us on the show, Patch. That was absolutely insightful, you amazing. You're very well spoken, and I can't get over your beard. So there you go. It's so <laughs> good. Oh, thank you. Yeah. It's so good. Um, and if I can add one more comment, yes. Yes. boo booed on one thing on the movie. Yes. What, what is they that? They should have cast Matthew Broderick as Sorrento. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, my God. Patch. Yeah. Good sir, you have <laughs> won the internet today. Well done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're totally you have my that is, today. Uh, you have won the oh, internet. That's so great. Well done. Thank Thanks you so, so much. much awesome. Hopefully, um, Thanks, you'll, guys. You'll, we'll a see pleasure. you in the chat in the future weeks to come. Yeah. You great. Bet. Uh -huh. I I hope uh, Patch calls back again. That was awesome. That was, that was really so great. Cool. Very um, cool. I, again, I love it when we um, talk fan casting and I know. Mm -hmm. having all these characters in the book and uh, there is potential there, which I'd never even thought about until Patch mentioned it. Yeah, so great. That would, yeah, bringing in people from classic, like if you brought in Molly Ringwald for something, yes. like the aunt uh, or something, sm yeah. you know. Oh my goodness, that would be so great. amazing. Some, some great 80s aunt. Yeah. Yes. iconic <gasps> actors and faces and from stuff. From the 80s. Awesome. I oh, haven't checked man. out the IMDb because mm -hmm. I don't like, I like to kind of formulate my I know, own. and I think I spoiled myself with an ending for the book you because I, I saw some of the casting and I was like, oh, 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 oh. So I spoiled something that might happen at the book. Too inquisitive. We I know. Should, I, well, we I'm, should I'm, definitely I'm, talk about it next week too absolutely. because today on the Nerdist News Talks Back, we were talking about just not any spoilers from the movie, but how they're doing mocap for a lot of the characters to create 60 mocap. Interesting. Are we there so they yet? are becoming their virtual characters. Are we so, there And that's yet? what I was saying was I think that will actually work because you do have to have this like sheen for this perfect mm -hmm. utopia that's based on pop culture, mm -hmm. that they're building out the Star Wars world and everyone looks like a kind of slightly more attractive version of them, or at least Wade does. Yes. For sure. So you want it to look a little bit a like that you. where everything is yeah. perfect and your client, you know. Is you that go going from a five to, to a nine. Mm -hmm. Bing. Is that, yeah. Is, yeah, that's tough. <laughs> I figured, you know, oh, just, just like in the case of Chris Evans with Captain America, you cast a nine and you use digital makeup to make him a five. Mm -hmm. I figured that'd be easier. Oh. <laughs> Whatever. Question oh, for you guys. Hollywood. Is that going to date the film immediately? Because as amazing as Avatar looks, at some point we're going to look at that and go. I don't think it's going to be that kind of mocap. Okay. I think okay. it's going to be, it's, Enhancements? What did Tr Jessica Chobot says Instagram filter. Oh, right. Great, we got our first Instagram yeah. movie. There yeah, it it's huh. going to be, wow. you know, it's going to make you look, but I feel like it'll be subtle and then everything around you and the tools and the mm -hmm. games, that will have that shiny quality to it. I would like to see that transformation. I think that's really great. That's yeah. getting me a little bit more excited because yeah. I just figure, I see all the problems with transferring it to a movie. Like, yes. But, now, but, I'm, but now I'm... Listen. Steven Spielberg made Jurassic Park. Yep. Kind of one of the reasons I, I've never read uh, um, Jurassic Park by uh, is that uh, right? Michael Crichton. I've never read the book. I love Michael but Crichton. But Jurassic books. Park is a massively influential film to me. It, mm -hmm. it doesn't I think it's date. One of the greatest. It hasn't dated. It hasn't, yep. Even with digital effects. It stands but the test of time. One of the reasons I'm hoping maybe at some point on this show on ABC that we get to read Jurassic Park is so that I can see like what what can Spielberg do in terms of adaptation? Mm -hmm. mm. Because mm. I'm like, there's no way that the book can be better. I know some. I met have I've met some people that are like the book is better. I'm like, there's no way <laughs> it can be better than the film. Jurassic Park, shut up. There's no way. Don't do that, Beacon. Really? Don't do, that's crazy. The book is the book is usually better. Yeah. There's but one time like, where the movie is better than the book. But like, Spiel, wow. like Steven Spielberg understands. There's two times yeah. the movie is better than the book. The notebook. You know, he understands oh, film. Oh, yeah, notebook. The notebook was awful to read. I love White oh. Oleander. I like the film adaptation better than the book. Yeah? Oh. Michael was the only one that I think the book was better. The book is better? The movie was better. The movie, the movie, the better. movie was, yeah, but you had it. What about Norton. The Godfather? I've never read The Godfather, the book. Yeah. I don't think and I that's will. the greatest film of all time, mm -hmm. arguably. Like, there's no way that the book is better than God. There's no way that it's better than Don Vito is played by. Sure. Whatever. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll talk more about it next <laughs> week. I really want to deep dive into the movie, but that, I. But we've got yeah. 10 chapters to get through. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah absolutely. Chat, you have the power. Pat says, Y'all are awesome. That's good enough for me. Chat. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. <yay. laughs> Thanks, Pat. Mythbuster says, I think the brightness, color, and shading are going to be the best effects to separate the world. I agree. Yeah, I think that, like, great sheen, job with that. that, you know, where it has to feel like a utopia, and especially mm -hmm. if you have a dystopia that's 
when we get into the end of, of this section and yes. the gray and everything gray is so faded and white faded and, and horrible and you need that. Yeah. You, you have to have life. those extremes. Yes, mm -hmm. and the saturation there's of no color that's ground. coming in and you feel like you can I mean, breathe there's clean been a, There's been a ton of movies that have done it. Wizard of Oz, yeah, Wizard yes. of even Oz sections of Avatar when you have Jake Sully, then he goes to the Avatar mm -hmm. world that's like way cooler to live there. The show Limitless right? does it when he's on mm -hmm. the enhancement the drug. and when he's wow. not. Yeah. Tron Legacy, people don't like that movie. I love that stupid movie. I think it's great and it does a little of that of like, look how cool the grid is compared to dumb old life, Garrett Hudlin. Yeah. Hey, I, I like the man because he has my last name. Cool. <laughs> cool. Pretty good. That's also why I like Dave Navarro, I guess. Fantastic. Okay. <laughs> so the last ten <laughs> chapters. I don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, aww. Um, I'm a poet, I guess. Mm. There's, There's, a bunch of famous, There's a bunch of famous Rachels. Yeah, that's true. Too many Rachels, is there? Oh, You're the Rachel. Know. You're the Rachel. There it is. Oh. Claiming oh. that one right here right now. So chapters 20 to 30, let's talk about some of the big events that happened in these 10 chapters. Some okay. of them, you know, you've got big un unveiling moments and then other times they kind of were just like, oh, let's rush through this. Um, so it basically starts with Wade Watts going, oh, I slacked off and was so you know sad mm -hmm. upon myself and I was distracted and now I'm not in the first place, which mm -hmm. was refreshing for me to mm -hmm. read. It's like, you know what, he's too perfect, and now there's a consequence. There was a quote in that section that I found kind of off-putting, that I like that as we go through these chapters, we are seeing, again, he's learning a lesson, he's learning that we're seeing them band together, that you can't, it's not really just a game, this is people's lives yes. that are at stake. But one quote at the beginning where, uh, he, after he's kind of berating himself about not getting there, he says, Suddenly I wanted to win the contest more than ever, not just for the money. I wanted to prove myself to Artemis, and I wanted the hunt to be over so that she would talk to me again, so that I could finally meet her in person, see her true face, and finally to make sense of how I felt about her. And I was like, oh, you didn't nah. learn anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> again, Stop what is it. the point in having an, an infatuation or this lust if you're not alive, mm -hmm. if everyone dies? Yeah. yeah. Whatever. So Teens, though. Teens, yeah, right? I get it. I mean, I was obsessed with the drummer from Hanson, okay? <laughs> What's his name? Zach Hanson. Zach Hanson? Yeah, his birthday Was he the middle October, one or the, or the young one? He was the youngest one. He was the youngest anyway, one? Yeah. And I went past Tulsa, which is where they're from. <laughs> I was like, I still know that. Sad, sad mm, mood. Bop. Um, so he's basically lost, and this is the point where he was uh, in the know about everything, and it was so easy, and he's stumped, and people are beating him with this um, information that he just can't attain. So he gets distracted and decides to dedicate six hours to playing a game of Pac-Man because it looks a little funky. It's like, uh -huh. oh, wait a second, this shouldn't really be here. I'm not coming first. Um, the six hours could be the make or break of existence, so I'm actually just going to... I was annoyed about that, obviously. <laughs> oh, yeah. Can, can I just say a real quick thing about that? Is the, uh, a thing that I've struggled with this book is, again, I've loved the world building, I've loved the world being. I think it's fantastic, but I think that in the effort to try to make Wade more relatable, I don't think that they go far enough. I don't think Ernest Klein goes far enough. We get to a section of, you know, I feel like th there's so many obstacles that get set up as like, oh, and then I had to play Joust. Thankfully, I mastered Joust a couple yep. years ago, mm. so it wasn't a big deal. Then I had to play the perfect game of Pac-Man, and this is how hard the it is to do it. perfect this is only of like Pac only like six people. Two hundred fifty-six levels. Only six people have ever done it in recorded history. And you have to get every dot. Yes. Get every and bit of fruit and get kill the them invisible all. dots at the end on that last screen mm -hmm. multiple times before. And, you know, so he's saying all this. He he's like, this is chance. how hard it is. Good thing I mastered Pac-Man a couple years ago. And I'm just like, what? Like, it's it's it's. Talk about a Mary Sue character. Can that, we just? Yeah, get, I mean, this is sure. a guy who this is, everything is too easy for him in terms of like knowledge of the video game world and everything like that. And I, he's I, spending all these hours going through it. But I think too that ultimately we're leading towards everyone having. He is too perfect. He is a Mary Sue. Yeah, for yeah. sure. But having strengths and weaknesses, mm -hmm. his are very strong character weaknesses. Whereas other people like Artemis might not have mastered every single thing, but their heart is in the right place mm -hmm. and have been going after this for the right reasons. Yeah. And you have to, I like that you, we're starting to see them team up and later in one of the clues you see that you, you, know, you can't do this alone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's a key part that you could be the best at everything but if you don't have empathy and kindness, you're not going to get very far. And you could have only that but not pay attention. You know, you can, yeah. it's really about finding your strengths and weaknesses and working with other people mm. to actually learn about yourself and have better goals, and so I, I like that element. But let's go back to um, Anorak's life. He was a 
isolated for the last decade of his life, which yeah. is planning all of this. He, Hallady, yeah. he wants the perfect nobody, I think, or someone who is obsessed with these things as much as him to find it. That's why he does. It's what it feels like. But he like. almost goes, yeah. I made the mistake of not opening up to my friends. Yeah. I basically burnt but all I my bridges. But I don't get that hard enough. I agree. I don't, you know, okay, so far you. up to this point, yeah. I understand that in this section we also get a clue of like, you have to do it together, not alone. Like, Wade gets that clue, mm -hmm. but it's all like, okay, so at the end he's going to team up with H and Artemis and, and um, whichever one of the Japanese the characters five. is still alive, right? Shoto. The high four, Shoto. Mm -hmm. I get it, but uh, I don't think that Ernest Klein has been hitting that hard enough for me up, at, up to this point. I, I love this comment from Java Book Geek Girl. I did appreciate that it wasn't make her fall in love with me, but figure out how I feel after meeting her in real person and not just via the, uh, the sure. Oasis. Yeah, yeah. I did note that as well. I was like, okay, props for totally. that. That's good. But still, he learned nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think, too, it reminds me a little bit about um, Catcher in the Rye. Mm -hmm. If you read Catcher in the Rye when you're a teenager and you read it when you're an adult, Different books. Totally <laughs> different. Just like the yeah. movie, a Goofy movie. Totally different experiences as a kid. You side with Max as an adult. You're like, Max is a little shit, and Goofy's yeah. trying real hard. Yep, leaning tower of cheese. I was always uh, like, yeah, Pete. Yeah, Pete. <laughs> DJ. Yeah, man. He's the best. Because you ain't got the moves. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Did not expect that one to come out. Um, um, but yeah, I think I think it's really to looking at um, he's growing as a, as a person and a teenager. He hasn't had anyone to... I'm yeah. super frustrated with him too, and I sure. do think you don't get to see the character building of him building those skills because we start at the beginning mm -hmm. when he finds the first, he figures out the mm -hmm. first clue. So totally. there's no training montage of any sort. It's like, nope, I knew that. I yeah. knew that too. Yeah, yeah. And again, yeah. he's like, I've watched every single show again, multiple like, times. You like, know what I was happen. comparing it to? Slumdog Millionaire is a movie where Dev Patel's character impossibly knows every answer in Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, but the movie flashbacks and it sets up like this really great, clever, charming way that each how aspect of his life, like how he yep. knew that, and mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I totally buy that this character knows everything, those specific things and only those things. Mm -hmm. If there was some kind of a Slumdog Millionaire version of the story, I would be so on board. I would, would be so be, on board. Though? He's it by would... himself, it would be him going through the game a million mm -hmm. times. Yeah. I think it that would, was the it exposition. Would, Everything yeah. in this thousand yeah. page almanac, yeah. I just completely destroyed because it was my yeah. lifelong consuming goal. Mm -hmm. I didn't have time for friends. I didn't have any friends. This was my life. I, I had a crappy like life with my aunt. I didn't depend on anyone. Yeah. I wasn't dependable. I couldn't go travel any of the worlds because I didn't have enough credits. Instead of choosing to do one thing, I decided money. to watch Family Ties a second time all the way through. Like, that's all it would be. That and that's not at your skin, doesn't it? super compelling. <laughs> yes, it does. But Although, to be fair, I've done that with Buffy more times than I would care to share. <laughs> wow. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> because of this, uh, because H and Artemis are now like possessors of the Jade Key, H decides that he was helped, even if it was indirectly, mm -hmm. decided to pay his dues to have it completely even now. So it's fair. Yes. Any, anything that you feel like I owed you, it is absolutely paid in due because you don't know where you need to go. Here's a screenshot of the location, off you go. And you know, Wade has this durr moment where it was, yes, yeah, was in front of him the entire time and he just didn't click. Um, so he goes through and collects uh, the key. And by this stage, the Sixers are so far advanced that they're almost on the crystal key right now. And they have all these combined resources, yeah. money, manpower, everything is in their advantage. Like, sure. Which is why them working separately still makes no sense, but that's fine. Mm -hmm. And then we discover that um, when Shoto and Daito uh, arrive at the planet, something goes down and basically Daito is offline. Yeah. And we discover that this is because he has actually been killed IRL. Dun, IRL. Dun, dun, dun. In real life. I the like that he at least got to go Ultraman for a second. I liked it in the flashback when, when Shoto shows up and tells Wade everything that happened when he's at the home base and tells him his real name and then Wade vice versa reciprocates, yes. which is a great moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I really love that moment. Uh, Shoto in the flashback is describing how he's like, he used the, um, capsule. the capsule. So there's this awesome, like, I'm reading, I'm like, this is so cool. Like Ultraman just like wrecking dudes, like, get to the ship, like, <laughs> yeah. get to the ship. It's and you so can hear cool. it, like, this is going to be a moment when they're yeah. like, you've only got 15 seconds. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, and he has this moment where he's like, heart, things going beep, 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 you know, it was great. Because that's going to be. Do you of reckon that'll be? Of course. It's going to be a thick accent. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know if this character is going to. Whatever. We'll talk about the movie next yeah. week. <laughs> but uh, great moment. That was I a great moment. I didn't actually. Like the hero moment that Rogue One, the, 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 the second mm. half of the movie was completely reshot so that these characters could get hero moments. And I'd actually. Really? Didn't, yes. Yes. They. Yes. I'll tell you about oh, that one. Oh, I want to hear more about it. Okay, yeah, great. That wasn't the original ending of Rogue One. Okay. Um, but there is something about, you know, you, you're backing this character and you want them to win so successfully that when they do 
Oh, that's nice. <laughs> when they do die, it needs to be in a moment of glory. Yes. You know, so they need to have their hero moment. And mm -hmm. I didn't register Daito having his hero moment until you just said that. Yeah, he absolutely did. Yeah. Um, but it's still, you know, Daito and Shoto were just characters created to further Wade's story, which is fine. They're side characters, they're side characters. They're bringing in that Japanese pop culture 80s, you know, element to it. To give it, it a global feel. To give it a well, global feel the as well. They become higher. celebrities in Japan, which of course makes also sense. A lot All that of stuff the is pop great. culture that is in the book as well, like a lot, some of it comes from Japan as well. Some For of sure. Like, of it. Yeah. yeah. And there's also a phrase that I have to mention. I was really impressed with Ernest Klein actually using this phrase, the word, it starts with an H, I'm forgetting it. It's like haikodo or something. If you guys remember, and this is somebody who becomes a shut-in in the real world. Yes, oh, and yeah. this is a real thing. thing. Yeah, it's an actual thing. thing. Yeah. So reading and that, I, I, camps for it. yes, I didn't mm -hmm. know it was a real thing, but as I was reading it, I was like, I bet that's a real thing. I and then looked it up, and sure enough, it is. Read an article about it where it was like uh, the, the suicide rates through the mm -hmm. roof yeah. if you are submitted to these camps. Yeah. Um, but people like there are so many clever ways that they escape because they're not. About, they would rather not get better. They would rather risk their lives I to know. escape from a healing and you know going past this, that this shut-in, yeah, yeah, it's an amazing concept, but it's mm -hmm. also frightening. And the Oasis is condoning, mm -hmm. enabling, and permitting that behavior. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah! Thank you so much, Vicap. Oh, uh, yeah, you fill that bad boy right up. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Good, sir. <laughs> your oh finest gosh. drop. Oh my gosh, what are your specials tonight? Is <laughs> 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 your light curry <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that like curry. I'm loving book club, guys. Hero. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Wine skidess. Um, Best. A little I feel bit like Japanese. a lot of the characters oh. serve. Oh. I found it. It's hikikomori. Hikikomori. Mm -hmm. hikikomori is what it's called. Right. Yes. The shut-ins. And that, you know, obviously was with the MMO. Um, but mm -hmm. hearing, you know, with StarCraft and a lot of these um, internet cafes where when a game would come out, they would put a pile of cash down and went, don't interrupt me for a month. And they would Thank you, Alpha Courtney. Thank you. Yes, from time for to a month. Time, it's crazy. They would pass away. Some of my yes, I heard from about that. I remember when, when World of Warcraft was massive. Some of my friends here in the United States got to a point where they were basically that. I crazy. had a bad run as well. Oh mod. I you got out. I think it was. I saw the sun rising um, when I logged on at like eight or nine o'clock that morning. Yeah. And I something snapped in me, and I just unplugged it, walked outside, and left the computer wow. out in the, like a busy street in Bondi Beach. Went to bed. Woke up in a panic, looked outside, computer was gone. I didn't even wipe my hard drive, idiot. Um, but I, I, yeah, I saw it was gone, and it was the most oh, enlightening and devastating feeling wow. I've ever felt. But I miss, I miss you, uh, my hunter in World of Warcraft. You can, you can always log back in. I did, I had two years, but it was too much time had passed. Sure. And I was like, what is this foreign Everybody concept? passed you up. That's crazy. Totally. Well, you made it out. So yeah. I get it. It's, you know, it's relatable. one of those things, it's easy, there's a difference between being introverted and being passionate about something and it becoming an addiction and it mm -hmm. becoming something that consumes you so that you can't partake in the rest of life. And I think that this whole thing is about that. It's about, you do have to step outside of yourself, whether it's in a virtual reality or just your own life. Yeah. We're seeing that in, you know, the country and just people in general that you need to look at other people because so often, and I do this a lot and I, I'm very, I try to be cognizant of it because I, I definitely, and this goes back way back to Haunting of Hill House, I project what I think other people think about me or about things onto them. Self-fulfilling prophecy? Yeah. And then you, and then it's like, well, of course I'm X, Y, and Z because I did this and they think, but you don't know what anyone else Rachel, thinks. You yeah. don't know. You're I mean, best. no thanks. Rachel. No, I'm I, I mean, it's just a habit yeah. that I had when I was it's younger and I yeah. catch myself doing it and I'm like, I just don't listen to that. Yeah voice because they don't know what they're talking about. I don't know what you're thinking. I don't know what anyone is thinking. And I think when you are someone who's shy, someone who's been bullied, someone who felt, feels like they have no one, which a lot, especially a lot of teenagers feel, yes. you go into yourself and you make your own world because you're like, well, at least this is safe and this is where I can be. And even when you see him leave the oasis at the end of these chapters and it's jolted into the real world and hasn't left that apartment. Yeah. But here's what in I love. Six, I love seven months. I love the one moment where he was like, Well, I haven't been outside, I haven't seen sunlight in forever. I wanted to see it. And yes. he lifted the visor yeah. and he looked outside and I was like, mm -hmm. Thank you, Wade. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I want the book to hit this element yes. harder. I want the book to to I want to, the book to have spent all of this time getting you on Wade's side. Yeah. He was essentially like this very introverted to a dangerous level, obsessive 
person mm -hmm. who doesn't have relationships with human beings in the real world yes. get you on the side of this guy and at the end to have that guy turn to basically the camera turn to the reader and go this isn't the way you should live your life mm -hmm. you should find a balance mm -hmm. you should love what you love but find a balance isn't for god's sake he hates people but the only two jobs he's ever held are both customer service representatives yep. like you know mm -hmm. anyway well i was having an epiphany when you were talking and that is we surround ourselves on purpose with like-minded people mm -hmm. sure. so we create our own bubble mm -hmm. in our universe and I've already noticed that like online and on Twitter, I don't want to know about our political mm -hmm. discourse. So I want to remove myself from that yeah, into man. my safe space. I was doing that. My friends, like I want friends that I can talk to the things that I love. And that's in essence all the Oasis is. Sure. Mm -hmm. You've got the Gunters who are all these obsessive people, whether it's because they want money or it's because they want glory or because they want validation for the wasting of time yeah. to these hobbies that they have. Um, but and Also I, because the world is such shit. The world is so awful. I mean, I'm, that my life's great and I still love escapism. Yes. I'm not yeah. running away from mm -hmm. anything. Yeah. Like, yep, it's yeah, still... I find it's comforting and it's, I think it's human nature to pain and and your life and happiness and all of those things are so relative to you as well that there's always something that seems like it's better. I no matter where my you are. Them away. All high school. Oh my god! If I had to listen to any oh more my. Justin Timberlake and Britney Spears and all that kind I'm of crap. So sorry. And I was a closet gamer mm. and I hid my geek to myself and I was listening to like my pop punk phase that I couldn't talk to anyone about mm -hmm. and I became a recluse in all of those things and I couldn't accept that about me because mm -hmm. it was different from what everyone else was doing. That's like the really watered down like yeah. version of it yes. all. There is extreme versions of this, which we yeah. are seeing in the book. Mm -hmm. But you know, this does humanize a lot of what we do feel. Well, I think too, Absolutely. that's why when we first read this, we were talking about this last week and we said, we, so we clicked on it. We were yeah. like, because you're finding people and you're like, oh my God, I didn't realize that other people loved this and like to read about all these things. And even this book club, I was talking about it earlier and I was like, I can't believe I get to talk about books every week yeah. it's the best when yeah. when i was younger and i would read in the corner and and like just you know yeah, and just be, yeah and just be and you're like but this is so fun and cool yeah, and yeah. just and in this especially before all the big superhero movies and sci-fi being recognized and mm -hmm. game of thrones and all of that that's been coming up yeah. the past few years this was like oh my god I love all of these things and there's new stuff i can find too and all these people love this and that's also what wade feels when yes. he meets Artemis and that's what Halliday and Ogden yes. feel when yep. they meet her name I forgot the wife yes the mm -hmm. wife mm -hmm. great great she's comment not really in character, the chat so. <laughs> see Zerwin says I gave up Facebook for the new year and I'm seriously happier for it that's so great right that it's is a, great it's a fine line to walk between creating an echo chamber that insulates you and not dealing with bad crud that totally. is absolutely true absolutely and I think we're all feeling that I remember Pat Oswalt yeah. said that uh, after the election he's like I'm not going to do escapism anymore because mm -hmm. I need to focus on the real world and make my yeah. community better and I absolutely agree and it's all stuff that we're like dealing with and reeling with and one thing about the book I didn't really like to bring it back to the book for a second first of all this has become so therapeutic thank you guys mm -hmm. yeah. this is great the yeah. wine just oh, the wine. Yeah. Up. <laughs> Woo. Woo. I was so sad before and now I'm kind of happy I don't know um, one thing I, I hated about the this section in the book is uh, Wade completes his challenge and gets all these pics of all these robots and he passed over the Iron Giant. Mm. The Iron Giant. I didn't think of you, but I my read favorite it. movie of I all did. time. I was like, "You're an idiot, Wade. You're done. You played yourself, you oh, idiot." You're falling into the nerd syndrome. That's an opinion. You are chastising someone for it having is my a different opinion, opinion to you. That the Iron Giant is the greatest robot of all time. The greatest giant robot of all and time. And yet it is you my, felt. Yeah, you are. I know. Vehemently <laughs> <You really>? disgusted. <laughs> no, that was great. That someone didn't share your particular opinion. No, it was mm. it was a cool moment. It was fun. I was just like, I would have picked the Iron Giant. And I would have t tore it up with this guy. I didn't know who I would have picked. Yeah, I know, right? Because like all the ones that were grayed Giant out, too. all the ones that were grayed out, I was like, I wonder how, what cool those ones were. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's this, that's this collective mm -hmm. kind of like we have to collect everything. Mm -hmm. We have yeah. to yeah. absorb yep. all the Funkos. knowledge. We have to know the everything. Yep, yep, yep. Funkos. But also, oh, I I'm think not doing Funkos. The, Never did. the great thing about what what Patton said about not escaping right. and something we've talked about too about being working in the fields that we do and looking at, at film and mm -hmm. books and TV and art is that look at all the discussions we've had so far and all the books have been either deeply personal mm -hmm. or about society as a whole and that's what great literature mm. and art and going back to Shakespeare looking at systems of power and dismantling how things work that's why we talk about this stuff because yeah. you can yeah. enjoy it on 
the, the general level and there's so much fun in that and you find people that you can talk to about it, but then you get to unpack it and be like, I'm gonna actually apply this to my life, yeah. to my mm -hmm. writing, to my work, and it's, it's just really great. Every piece of fiction should have a truth in it. Mm -hmm. Every single thing, even with something like Catalyst, the Star Wars Rogue One book that I read, I'm like, I could find something in there that's mm -hmm. like, that's, that's that author talking about some truth about uh, politics or, or how humans and relate to another. And balances out something. the escapism because escapism yeah. is like trying to you know not think about you mm -hmm. and place you in a completely different world. But if you can pick something in and then apply it to yourself and in the real world, balance. For reals, I'm a good person because uh, Peter Parker. That's no joke. Yes. I'm a good human being because of Peter Benjamin Parker. Come at me. Come <laughs> at me. That's true. I believe that. That's true. People yep. in the chat yeah. are picking uh, their favorite their robots, robots yeah, which right. is awesome. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's really, really cool. Cool, 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 cool. cool. Ooh. Bender's a good one. I HK47. Hey there, meet can I, nice. can I pick number six? What's number the six? Cylon? six? The Cylon, number six? Oh, sure. nice. That would be amazing. Very sexy. Well, Very yeah. indeed. Very sexy. I love her. Yeah. Um, so we kind of get an idea of what the next crystal key, uh, key clue is all about. Um, I like that they've kind of touched in movies. They touched over games. So now it's obviously time to talk about music. Mm -hmm. It was a little... Yeah. It, it, Russified. Yeah. It, it got Russified. wasn't as smooth. Oh, I, I put those pieces of music on while I was reading the book. Mm -hmm. Of course you did. And it was pretty great. Yeah. And he's in the cave. He's like, I started to play the first couple of riffs of this one Rush song. I was like, I don't know what that is. I pulled it up. I'm like, okay, I'm in the cave. All right, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> nice. So you guys should do it. Why does nobody know, else do it? I want to play. That's true. Bring an iPod. I'm I don't deep know. In you have no the, Wi-Fi. Deep I, you, in the you oasis. A, Thank you. You got it. You're deep in the oasis. Yeah. Uh, but having this, the the guitar be the sword and the stone, it's kind of like cool. two birds, one cool. one stone there, one shred, mm -hmm. I should say. Mm -hmm. um, but now uh, Bryce Lynch which is Wade Watts' alias, mm -hmm. has got a little bit of a backup plan. And this catches the reader by surprise because it's something that he did seven months ago as like a, a safety measure that he's mm -hmm. now put into effect. And I mm -hmm. kind of love that we're looking at a side of him that we think we know him back to front. He's almost predictable at this stage. Mm -hmm. And then he does something that keeps us Good. in the dark. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really, really great. What do you think is going to happen? Well, I know what's going to happen because I've read oh, it. Oh, that's right. Yeah, what yeah. Do you think's I'm the only happen? person that can what answer this question. <laughs> what do I think is going to happen in the last section of the book? Well, I think that with the clues that he's been given from Halliday, from Beyond the Grave, Wade is going to reach out to Artemis and H and Shoto and team up and find a, a the final gate that's in this impenetrable fortress that's on the planet, the Halliday planet. Impenetrable, just and just get in that <laughs> fortress. They're just going to, Ma, they're just going to get up in there and... Yeah. And he's going to need to use teamwork for each of them to put in their keys or something like that. And Halliday will How hopefully put in the keys? have a message. I don't like this. Shh, let's oh, do it. They... The power of friendship. They're going to get a planeteer oh, ring. Yeah. They're going to get some 80s BS team thing. What's a good team movie from the 80s, guys? Sandlot Kids. Breakfast oh, wait, Club. Was... It's going to be some Breakfast Club thing. They all have yeah. to write a letter to yeah, the they principal. They write a letter to Sorrento. Uh, to Sorrento, <laughs> yeah. Like, sincerely, the Breakfast Club. Except That's for Doto because he died. Daito because oh, he died. Daito. Yeah. And then Wade's gonna do that. Um, so and, and and I think he's gonna go meet uh, uh, Artemis in real life because he we, we learned that he pulled up her photo and was like looking Which at her. I just Here's the thing. I, I saw it as a Shallow Hal moment where oh. Shallow Hal, the movie Shallow Hal, Jack Black, I honestly think is good. Brenda it has Paltrow. some good mm -hmm. message sure, in it. Yeah. Gwyneth Paltrow plays yeah. an obese woman who is uh, obese but is beautiful. And, and Jack Black sees her in real life and he goes, oh my God, you're the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. Oh. And that's, the, like, that's what I, the movie should be. There, so there's this moment the where she, moment. For sure. Oh, he where he's like, yeah. he invades the privacy. I know. He I know. He does exactly what the Sixers do. He does because he just got to know because I mean, he loves her. You got to be the enemy cool. to destroy the enemy. Yeah, he, so, he doxes her for love. That's what he did for love. I did it for love. I dox her for love. <laughs> so I think that's what's going to happen. I think that he'll end up winning the golden ticket, the key, because that's what happened at the beginning of the. Uh, didn't the beginning of the book say that he won the whole thing, or did he just say that he was the first guy to get the first? First key? guy to get the first clue. Great. You have no idea how this ends. Okay, okay. I don't. I have no idea. That's what I think will happen. Yeah. Cool. Um, do you think that we could get, like, if you look at tropes in texts and in movies, that we're going to get, like, your Gandalf the, the white moment? Daito's going to come back? No, he's dead. That's all I'll say. Who <laughs> for thought? So what? Now, oh, crap! Now it's time to finish the last quarter of the book. 31 to whatever the rest is. 39? 39. There you go. 31 to 39. We're going to finish this together. It's going to be great. We'll be writing some notes down as well if you do want to join us same time next week. Uh, but after that, we're going to need a new book. Yeah. We're going to read something else. We powered through this one. This was a nice little easy read, which was refreshing after the Dark Tower. Because yeah. That one was a tricky. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Every time I was like, I don't know what to say. Yeah. I know. <laughs> 
so much, so much thought and concentration it you on a molecular every level. Word, yeah. uh, word, sorry. Um, but if you do want to get your recommendations in, jump on to Twitter at Nerdist, at Geek and Sundry, or at Join Team Alpha. You can use the hashtag Alpha Book Club as well. Uh, we'd love to hear the kind of books you'd like us to read. Mm -hmm. I believe Hector was dropping a fat hint at the start of the show. Mm -hmm. Jurassic Park? Sure. Uh, I also... I used to be able to do this better. Whoa. I used to be able to do the Tyrannosaurus noise. I oh, practiced. that's pretty good. I, you want to hear my Velociraptor? <laughs> <Russell Raptor? laughs> that's the a really going good T-Rex. The banner? That's, yeah, I exactly. I have to say this because every time I do my dinosaur impersonation, it looks so bad if I do it in public because I do my Velociraptor. <laughs> it's such a dinosaur. It's a dinosaur. Do you want to hear my raptor? Yes. <laughs> 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 So much better Here, here's than another raptor. Here's another uh, raptor. Ready? Uh, 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 this raptor's from Jurassic Park 3. Ready? Alan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. All right, you oh, got it. it. You got it. Pages. You got I it. I love it. All right. Uh, stick around, though. You can watch. <laughs> Why would you steal the eggs? Anyway. <laughs> stick, stick around for Watch Your Language and Sidekick with Matt Mira. And Paul Shear's going to be the host for this one. Oh. Yes. Paul Don't go anywhere. Your night Hollywood is celebrity. sorted. Cheers to you. Cheers. See you guys next week. Classy Alpha Book Club. Yeah. Bye, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Wine wanker. Wine wanker. Wine wanker. Ooh. Ooh.